pressure. Yep. Yeah. Who here has seen Mean Girls? Okay, so it looks like everybody, but in case anyone needs a refresher, in Mean Girls, Regina George was mean to people just because she enjoyed it. She'd be nice to them and kind of lure them in, and then she'd say mean things about them, even though they didn't do anything to her. And she had the opportunity to act like this because she was popular, which in high school is power. And maybe if she wasn't so popular, if she was nerdy or something, she wouldn't have had the opportunity to be so abusive to other people. Unfortunately, we aren't gonna talk about Regina George anymore today. We are gonna talk about somebody who, like her, enjoyed hurting other people. So we're gonna talk about Ilsa Koch, who was the wife of the commandant at Buchenwald concentration camp. Um, she's a very extreme version of Regina George. She used her position as the commandant's wife to act on her darkest impulses. She's known as the bitch of Buchenwald in the popular culture, and she's infamous for collecting prisoners' tattoos, as well as seeking out opportunities to punish them. In order to prove that Ilsa Koch was evil because that was her reaction to power rather than because the Nazis made her that way, I'm going to talk about her life, the culture of concentration camps, and her deviation from the cultural standards. She had a very average upbringing. She was born into a middle-class family. She went to a normal, average school, and then after that, she worked as a secretary in Dresden. So there's nothing outstanding about that. She joined the Nazi party four years before she married her husband um, at a concentration camp, actually, called Sachsenhausen Concentration Camp. Um, after their wedding, they took control of the Buchenwald concentration camp in 1937. It was only after her husband became the commandant that she began to show the sadistic tendencies that she's remembered for in Buchenwald. We've all heard horror stories about the culture in the concentration camps, and Buchenwald is no different. As soon as the prisoners arrived, they were brutally beaten and harassed. They were constantly starved and forced to perform manual labor. And every evening, the guards would pick out the people that they thought had misbehaved, and they'd punish them publicly in front of everyone. In some cases, they'd force them to take off their clothes. And the worst part about this was that the officers' wives would often watch, so it was even more humiliating for the people who were being beaten. The officers and their families lived really close to the camp. They lived just outside of it, and they actually lived relatively comfortable lives. But they would accept bribes so they could have extra luxuries like wine and desserts and things like that. And even though many forms of immorality were culturally accepted into the camps, Ilsa Koch and her husband were still seen as morally reprehensible by everyone else. So that's just a good measure of how horrible they were. Like I said before, it wasn't uncommon for the camp guards to accept bribes, and the Koch's would accept bribes as well as steal from the prisoners whenever they came in. They had so much extra income from this that they had lots of extra luxuries, like they had a fully stocked wine cellar in their basement, and he bought her like a giant diamond ring. And so they were actually tried for, um, for corruption by the Nazis perspective there. They had so much extra income that she had a private indoor riding arena built for her so she could horseback ride by herself. And either all these gifts didn't placate her or they just made her feel like she had more power that she wasn't taking advantage of. So there are also affairs that she was sleeping with other guards and she would use her feminine wiles to attract the prisoner's attention. So she'd ride around on horseback through the camp sometimes, scantily clad for the time, so like wearing pants, which women didn't do. And then if any of the prisoners looked at her, she'd punish them, either herself, by hitting them with her riding crop, or if she didn't really have time for that, then she would um, report them to the guards. And this is actually really strange because most of the wives and like the officers' families were extremely adverse to turning in any of the prisoners, and in some cases, they'd even try to help them out if they could, if they could risk it. But most horrifically was her perversion with collecting tattooed human skins and crimson heads. And 
she was actually tried for decorating her home with the shrunken skulls that you can see there and lamps made of tattooed skin or human skin. And some of the crazier things that people heard was that she would, she had a photo album made or covered with human skin and she had a, human, a purse that had tattoos on it that she had tanned just because she wanted them. Certainly there's no reason for the commandant's wife to do this. It's not like the Nazis made anyone do this. She just went above and beyond what she needed to do as the commandant's wife because she enjoyed doing it, not because it was actually important for her to be taking part in. Ultimately, the Nazi party did not turn Ilse Koch into an evil person. They only provided her with an opportunity to act immorally. She had a normal upbringing and she didn't begin her sadism as soon as she joined the Nazi party. It was only when she had a position with some amount of power that she became such a cruel and perverse person. Power can corrupt, and for some people, it can be all-consuming. Hopefully no one here has a penchant for collecting human tattoos, but we should all be aware that power can change a person and not necessarily for the better.